Hello everyone, welcome to today's video in which I'll compare all three current VRAM settings in gaming for the Lenovo Legion Go. As of the making of this video, Lenovo just released a better BIOS that also offers 6GB VRAM, which I didn't use, and maybe we can find out in this video if it would make any sense at all to use 6GB of VRAM for the Legion Go. If you want to change the pre-allocated VRAM yourself, you have to press and hold the volume up key together with the power button when the Legion Go is completely powered off. Hold both of these buttons until you get a drop-down menu in which you can start the BIOS. There you can activate um, the advanced settings and change the VRAM size. Save the changes and restart the device. Now I was running all these tests with the 30W custom turbo mode while the Legion Go was plugged in and I recorded the gameplay with a capture card on a separate PC. First I tested some games at 720p and later at the display's native resolution for some more demanding games in combination with FSR. PS, if you want to keep track with my current Legion Go special series, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more Legion Go content as well as gaming laptop reviews and GPU benchmarks. And without further ado, let's just jump right into the first game for today, which will be Baldur's Gate 3. And here we are actually seeing the worst case scenario of what can happen if we assign 8GB pre-allocated VRAM for the Legion Go. The game just crashes after a few seconds of gameplay. Now, why is that? If you assign 8GB of the total 16GB as VRAM, Windows and the game itself only get 8GB of RAM for left for anything else. And in the case of Baldur's Gate 3, this will lead to crashes. I double and triple checked this and it happened every time, but only with the 8GB setting. Despite that, there was a small difference of 2 FPS for the average FPS between the 3 and 4GB setting, which is almost within the margin of error, whereas the 1% lows aren't noticeably affected. In Microsoft Flight Simulator on medium settings at 720p, there seemed to be no measurable difference between the three settings like at all. Similar frame times, almost identical average FPS. You can actually see that there is a small difference in RAM and VRAM usage, but it doesn't seem to affect the game like at all. At least in my test flight over New York City. And again, God of War seemed to be fine through all three settings with identical average FPS and no big issues whatsoever. And for Cyberpunk 2077, it was just all the same all over again. Basically identical average and 1% low FPS values. But surprisingly, for Fortnite, it actually made a pretty noticeable difference. Using my replay file, I saw an average of 115 FPS for the 3GB setting, 119 FPS for the 4GB setting and a clear improvement of almost 20% with 142 FPS for the 8GB setting. Now at this point let me point out two things. First, the ROG Ally and the Legion Go seem to handle these settings a bit differently as my research pointed to an improvement for the Ally in most games if you raise the VRAM to 6 or 8GB. And the channel Filterless has a pretty good and very detailed video about that, so check that out. Now the Legion Go doesn't seem to behave that way in most games, at least uh, yet, since that could of course change a bit with future BIOS and driver updates. And the second thing is that not until long ago, I was pretty sure that changing the pre-allocated VRAM size for iGPUs wouldn't change the performance as it's physically all the same RAM anyways for which I was proven wrong. I also made a dedicated video about that, um, which I'll post a link to in the description, so check that out if you're interested. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla at medium settings, I saw a small difference which could be within the margin of error once more. 66 versus 67 versus 68 FPS on average. The 1% lows seem to be identical through all three settings. With a small hiccup for the 4GB setting which is just coincidence and happens in some runs. Forza Horizon 5 actually behaved a bit weird uh, because I was getting the best result with the 4GB setting at 720p and the medium preset with 89 FPS on average, over 85 FPS for the 3GB and 84 FPS for the 8GB setting. 
Maybe once more, pre-allocating too much of the overall RAM as VRAM is causing the game to not get enough system RAM and allocating too little VRAM also becomes an issue as well. PS, there is no auto setting for the VRAM just yet. There was a slight difference for the three settings in Hogwarts Legacy with 4GB weirdly being the slowest, but again might be within the margin of error. I have to point out that none of these settings triggered the um, well-known pre-caching of the shaders at the beginning of the game. Lies of P on high settings at 720p seem to work a bit better with the two higher uh, VRAM settings with 75 and 74 FPS over 70 FPS for the 3 GB setting, whereas this was one of the few games that actually seemed to use more than 4 GB of VRAM when they had the opportunity. I was afraid that The Last of Us would even load a safe game with only 8 GB system RAM left, but it worked and there actually was a slight difference between the three settings again. 45 versus 47 versus 49 FPS on average with a pretty solid 1% lows for all three of them. And I'm not surprised that The Witcher 3 doesn't care at all about the RAM since it's a pretty old game that never needed a lot of RAM or VRAM to begin with. So there is literally no difference between the three settings whatsoever. And now let's have a look what happens if we choose the Legion Go's native resolution which is 2560 by 1600 pixels. For these tests I was using FSR on balanced or even performance mode. Now contrary to the 720p test in Forza Horizon 5, this time there was like no difference at all between the three settings. Though let me point out that the average FPS were significantly lower on 1600p with FSR than at 720p without FSR. For Hogwarts Legacy at 1600p and low settings, with FSR balanced, there was a noticeable hit on the 1% lows and the game became definitely more stuttery, especially for the 8GB setting this time around. I also fired up Starfield for the 1600p test at low settings with FSR and a resolution scale of 50% and saw, well, basically no difference at all once more. P.S. In order to get this game running, you have to install the newest drivers from the AMD side, which are the drivers for the Ryzen 7 7840U, and you have to use a workaround, and there are videos how to do that on YouTube if you're interested in playing this game, because with the standard uh, drivers you can't play it as of now. And last but not least, The Last of Us seemed to run a tiny bit better with the 8GB setting at 1600p with 31 versus 31 versus 33 FPS on average and it really used a lot more VRAM as you can see here. But again, the average FPS might be within the margin of error. Though, as you can see here, the 1% low was only 1 FPS for the 8GB setting which was caused by seldom but heavy stuttering. Might be the page file kicking in meaning that the system has to use the SSD as spare RAM. Now what's the conclusion to all of this? Hard to say to be honest. I personally would stick to 4GB as of now, since having only 8GB of regular RAM left can really become a problem in some games. And after all, in most games it doesn't really seem to matter, at least yet. And I personally think that the 6GB VRAM option won't change a lot, except if the bias itself is better of course, but we will have to find out that in the future. If the Legion Go only had 32GB that would be fantastic, as using 8GB of pre-allocated VRAM would still grant us 24GB regular RAM for the system and the game itself. I personally would definitely consider paying 50 bucks extra for such an addition. What about you? Let me know in the comments. And now that's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe for more Legion Go content. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye and tschüss.